In the summer of 1940, a dozen BF-109 German aircraft came down on Britain out of the sun in the early morning without any warnings. The sky was full of BF-109s and Heinkel-111 bombers carrying tons of bombs targeting innocent civilians and launching a vicious attack on Britain out of nowhere which Churchill had warned of earlier. At that moment, the Spitfire and the war hero rose from the ground at a speed of 594 kilometers per hour, just in time to stop this attack and save millions of human lives. The Battle of Britain was a changing point in the World War, which led to the launch of D-Day, winning the World War and saving the world from Hitler. As the World War pilot heroes described it, it was such an incredible machine to fly because it turns agile and does everything you need in combat so quickly. It was the most beautiful aircraft, and it was a fighter. What incredible design made the Spitfire leave the ground at that speed and make surprising turns combating the enemy efficiently? This is what we'll be talking about in the video today. The Spitfire is from the British Royal Air Force. It's a single-seat aircraft for fighting battles during the Second World War. It was used by other Allied countries to the British Empire at that time, like the Free French Air Force, United States Army Air Force and the Canadian Air Force Army. There were different varieties of the model Spitfire made, like the Rolls-Royce Griffin-engined MK24 to the MK1, which has different wing shapes and gun types. Around the period of 1938 to 1948, an amount of 20,351 Spitfire aircraft were made. The public of Britain first saw the Spitfire on the 27th of June 1936, at the RAF Hendon air display. Even though the full-scale production was supposed to start immediately, it had numerous issues to solve which took a lot of time to overcome, and didn't reach the combat air until mid-1938. This was the first production of the Spitfire, the K9787 model. This war aircraft was flown on the 15th of May 1938 by Geoffrey Quill. The designer of the Supermarine Spitfire was R.J. Mitchell, and was designed to be an optimum performance interceptor and short-range war aircraft, which is meant to be swift, highly mobilized, and ready to take a hit during battle, an issue previous aircraft were not overcoming. This method of combat aided the British military to meet up with the war interception and enable them to be in the air during the time of battle. The ideal warplane has to be in altitude for a maximum of 10 minutes with a sign of radar screen intervention, It'll never be possible if the warplane can't gain altitude at a fast pace to meet the enemy warplanes in time. The period to gain altitude was crucial at that time to make the pilots able to get to the foe's aircraft at a rapid state without causing any issues with the aircraft and meeting the enemy at the right time was the main concern of the British Army. That's why the Spitfire was created. The Spitfire was capable of climbing 2,500 feet or 760 meters in a minute which will take around four to five minutes to reach the altitude desired. The Spitfire was the perfect war aircraft for reaching the target altitude at the fastest time possible and also for its combat capabilities with its mobility being at its peak. The design of the Spitfire. The chief designer of this amazing Spitfire as earlier stated was RJ Mitchell. His initial goal for this war aircraft was to be an extremely high performance interceptor with a very short range interceptor aircraft. The designs were made at the Supermarine Aviation Works. He wanted to be very creative with his designs when it came to the Spitfire and wanted to think outside of the box with the intent to create an incredible warplane that can be able to outtake, overturn and outmaneuver any enemy war aircraft. One of the major warplanes that the Spitfire was combating against was the Hawker Hurricane, and the Spitfire had to surpass that warcraft in as many ways as possible. Even in the present day, the designs of the Spitfire are still difficult to understand because of the complexity of the engineering skills that were made in the design. Numerous factors were in the designs of the Spitfire that made a tremendous impact on the war. The warplanes during that time were stacked shaped wings aircraft which can lift the aircraft and make them stronger and provide G-force maneuvers. The only bummer about the stacked shaped warplanes is that they form a bit of drag. RJ Mitchell wanted the wings designs to be different from the others to prevent the form of drag that extends the time to get to the perfect altitude. The shape of the Spitfire wing had a huge effect on the way the plane's distribution lift was equal. 
This made the balance of the plane on point as not to lose altitude, and the accurate shape of the wing, which was the elliptical wing, was best to reduce drag on an airfoil that rises from the development of a lift. This is when the low pressure air from beneath the wing gets to the high pressure air on top of the wing. This wing is also great for fast mobility and turn performance. The turn performance for Spitfire was measured by the smallest radius turn that a plane can achieve. The smaller the turn, the better range for fighting. The range of turning has a huge impact on the plane's drag and its ability to maintain altitude. For the plane to make a perfect turn without any drag or losing altitude is called the turn performance. And one of the things that was needed to make sure the plane will not lose altitude at a particular time in the air is the perfect wing. And looking for a perfect wing was an incredible task that was given to RJ Mitchell, who tried his absolute best to look for that perfect wing for this plane. It'll also be thin to reduce any extra weight on the wing. But RJ Mitchell stated that he didn't care if the shape of the wing was elliptical or even if it made a huge impact on the war aircraft by a milestone. He just wants something that can cover the guns for battle. The elliptical wing had no issues with the dragging at a major scale, which was mainly used in the plan for a slow reduction in cord length. This is the length of the wing. The placement of the guns was also vital in the time of battle. The space made in the wings was meant to provide the space to fit guns, landing gear, hydraulics, wing support structures and radiators. The guns that were embedded into the wings were a 20mm cannon and four small 7.7mm Browning or 8 Browning machine guns. The wings were both light because of the alloy material used to make the war aircraft and capable of carrying necessities for war, making it easier to make a turn with the perfect on-turn performance with ease. There was supposed to be minimum strength on the wing and any unnecessary weight must be removed because if you add extra weight on the wing, it'll cause drag, decrease altitude, increase consumption of fuel and decrease the turn performance. This gave the Spitfire more fighting abilities than any other enemy warplane like the Hurricane and gave it a higher possibility of winning any battle with enemy aircraft. The shape of the Spitfire is mainly because of the wing spar at the quarter cord which made the wing a shape that made the aircraft more aerodynamic. The wing of the Spitfire is a true masterpiece that gave the Spitfire the edge with iconic engineering design. The engine of the Spitfire war aircraft. The engine of the Spitfire, called the Merlin, was performed by the clever minds of Britain. Their constant goal was to increase the power of a 27-litre engine displacement, thereby increasing the power output of the engine. The engine produced around 1,030 horsepower, which is about 768 kilowatts, and it gradually increased during its time, making it more efficient for war and battle. To increase the power of the engine, the engineers had to increase the power of the heat energy that is given into the engine. This is by providing the certain amount of air to the engine that is required air pressure because of the optimum air pressure ratio, which is 12 to 1, to increase the air pressure in the engine. This is why the Merlin engine was created with a supercharger. This is when air is passed through the engine and then passes to the calibrator where fuel is mixed with the airstream, which will give the ratio of optimum air. The supercharger compressor helps to compress the air through a piston that regulates the amount of air being flowed into the engine. The early stage of the Merlin engine has a single supercharger, single speed, which was a little slow. The speed was determined by the ratio of the gear coming from the crankshaft which made the engineers make the supercharger design work at optimum compression and speed ratio for a specific altitude. The throttle of the air was slowly opened as Spitfire gained altitude. The incredible engineering of the Spitfire had no comparison, from the wings to the radiator, making a perfect form of war aircraft in the performance of warfare. It surpasses most of the other warplanes of its time and is a form of inspiration to present-day war aircraft one of the most amazing warplanes to make a huge impact on World War II. That's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed learning about the engineering of the Spitfire. Until next time, when you'll have the opportunity to learn about other insane engineering structures and great architectural designs, don't forget to like and share this video and hit subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching.